back and I'm going to be taking you right now to see John Graydon. John Graydon is an author who wrote a book called Who Killed Walt Bone? It's a story of his life as he got introduced to karate, went down the wrong path and changed his life around to make it something very successful. He's a great guy, really enjoy talking to him and I know you're going to like his book. And hopefully if you have a child that is kind of going down the same path, his story will help you recognize the signs to stop your child from going down that same path. Let's go talk to uh, let's go talk to John Graydon right now. Hey everybody, I'm here with John Graydon, and we are he is the author of Who Killed Walt Bone, and we're going to be talking about his life and the story that he has written. Welcome to the show. How are you doing Thank today? You. Thanks for being here. So tell me a little bit about your history and your book. I like many kids in not, the early 1970s, the kung fu boom hit. It was huge. The biggest films. And the theaters were the Bruce Lee Kung Fu films. Right. The biggest show on TV was the Kung Fu television show with Kwai Chang Kang. And on, even on radio, the, the, you turn on the radio and it'd be Kung Fu Fighting would be the song. So this whole Kung Fu thing hit so big and strong. And I was a shy, chubby 13 year old. Uh, I, I like to say that I was, uh, I was the victim of bullies, braces, and really bad clothes, <laughs> which was <laughs> indicative of the, the 1970s. If there was ever a decade for ugly, the 70s was it. It was, right. I mean, I looked like the, 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 an Osmond groupie. It was just awful. <laughs> so in, in order for me to try and gain some, some, some confidence and some control in my life, you know, I'm, my father was in the military and he raised us, the love America, and he raised us on John Wayne, Charles Bronson, Clint Eastwood, men who were men, you know, as a manly man. That was a big deal. And there was a sense of fair fighting. You know, you don't kick a man in the groin. You never hit a man when he's down because it's easier to kick him. But we went to this theater when I was 13, the Largo Theater, and it was the Five Fingers of Death. It was a terrible film, but it was the first of these Chinese Kung Fu films. And these guys weren't big strapping John Wayne's. They were little dudes, little guys. And they would fly through the air and break every rule of fighting we were ever raised on. They didn't just kick a guy in the groin. They ripped his nuts out. They didn't just kick a man when he's down. They stomped him into a, a <laughs> grave. We sat there a slack jawed, and I was just blown away. I had to have that. I wanted to do that. So the following week, I started calling local karate schools, and lo and behold, we went to a local school called the Florida Karate Academy that was owned, and the instructor was Walt Bone, and he uh, he – got us excited and got me really immersed deeply into the martial arts lifestyle. So that's how the introduction and early days of martial arts were for me. What type of martial arts wa was it? Taekwondo. You may have heard of Taekwondo, but this is Taekwondo. In other words, it was from Texas, which means it was rough. It was what they call blood and guts. So they were far more aggressive and fighting oriented than the original Asian Taekwondo style that it, it emanated from did it help you as a you know in school and just all around it's, i know i know and I, I know it helped me good for you because it didn't help me <laughs> <laughs> and i and i want to qualify that but this is the truth i was a straight a student i was on a roll i mean it was, school was very easy for me i got so deep into karate that's all i could think about so when we went to say biology class i would open my biology book reach down and i'd slip in a copy of official karate magazine so i'd be reading about you know kung fu and self-defense while the instructor's talking about you know self vision or something i have no idea so my grades actually started to drop to the point where i dropped out of school i stopped going and i i can guarantee you that would have never happened had i not got involved in martial arts and i, I don't mean to say in any stretch of the imagination that martial arts is bad for anyone it's a great training it's great exposure it's it, it's a great process for kids in my case it was really the reverse it was almost like bizarro world and that's partially why i wrote the book because i i, I think a, a good parent's nightmare is that all the hard work that they put into raising their child to be law-abiding honest respectful all that work goes out the window when that kid becomes a teenager and finds someone or something they think is cooler and that's what happened to me. I thought my karate instructors walked on water. They, they were just the coolest guys I'd ever seen in my life. Holy cow. They were athletic. They were deadly. They could kill you with one blow. At least in the movies they could. 
and they were very healthy. They would eat right. They talked about uh, eating healthy, don't eat sugar, don't eat salt. And they trained, and they trained hard, and they were honest. They were good. They were honorable. And I really immersed myself into that. And then one fateful Friday afternoon, I was with um, – a bunch of the brown belts and we were training. I was 15 years old. I was a brown belt and a real good one. And when the workout finished, the guy said, okay, let's party. I said, well, what do you mean? And it was like when you know, the, the parents leave the house and leave the teens at the house, the atmosphere changed, the vibe <laughs> changed, the vibe changed big time. I felt it and I was really uncomfortable. And I remember my first karate class, Mr. Bones saying in front of the class, don't ever come to my class drunk. Don't ever come to my class stoned. This is, again, early 70s. So these guys broke out the bongs and the pot and, and the beer. And, um, oh, man, what? Mr. Bone doesn't. He said never come to the karate school stoned or, or drunk. And they started laughing. He said, John, you're so dumb. He said never come to the karate class drunk. He comes stoned all the time. It was like. If you can imagine psychologically somebody pulling a trap door and you're just whoosh, you go straight down to a dark place that's what happened rather than running for the hills which I should have done maybe who knows I continued to do what I'd done to that point and that was to try my best to be like my instructors so I got really caught up in that world and it was uh, it was a it makes for an, an, an amazing book. <laughs> it makes for great stories. But it's a completely different path than anyone who would enroll their child in a martial arts school today, and I encourage them to. But the message I want to get is make sure you check out and monitor and be aware of the influences, whether it's people or things or music or genres or, or, or cultures, that are influencing your teens. You just can't take it for granted. It's not that you don't trust your teen. Don't trust the world around them. That's the key point to the book. I totally agree. I see so many parents just kind of trying to throw their children into something like a karate, thinking that everything's just fine and dandy. But there are some bad people in those schools, just like there's bad people in regular schools, and they can take you down paths that you shouldn't be doing because you think that they're cool or you think that they're, you know, in influential in in uh, just to you as as yourself. And you know, I've seen that happen to a lot of people. I think it is important for parents to to really embrace what their children are doing and just kind of monitor it. They don't have to like spy on them every two minutes and be a helicopter parent, but just keep an eye out. There's a big difference between involvement in terms of I'm supportive. I drive them to class and, and those kind of things. That's great. But you really want to have a clear understanding of what's going on behind the, 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 the closed doors. And I, I was doing an interview recently and, and the guy said, well, you know, it's early 70s. A lot of people were partying those days. And I said, okay. Imagine that your child was really good at biology. And after high school every day, that biology teacher would invite the smart kids over to the house and they would study biology and they'd watch videos and do experiments. And it just sounds like they're really getting into biology. But you didn't know that part of the experiment was rolling dope yeah. and doing drugs. And that's part of the biological experiment. Would you approve of that in the 70s? Would you approve of that in the 80s, the 90s? Now, no, you'd never approve anything like that. So th that level of, of, of interest and concern in monitoring, I think, is, is real important. What are some signs that parents should be looking for? A radical change in respect and, and behavior. And this is a, indicative of today's world. Today, parents work hard to become friends with their kids. I think that's a mistake. It's nice to be friendly, but my job first is to keep you on the straight and narrow. For me, I was raised in a military family, yes sir, no sir. Oddly enough, yes sir, no sir went out the window when I started doing karate. Now today, if you join a good karate school, they teach you to say yes sir, no sir. It's complete opposite. Again, I can't emphasize that to you enough. Martial arts schools today are great with kids. This was the early 70s. There weren't many kids. So a radical change in behavior and also, watch the crowd they're hanging out with. That is really important. I went from a group of guys that were cars, stealing cars, drinking booze, doing drugs. You know, those, when those guys pull up in their van, 
<laughs> to take your 16 year old out that's a pretty good red signal you know? <laughs> i would think so <laughs> mcfly <laughs> yeah it's like the guy with the with the motorcycle coming up to date your daughter. He gets out. He's got that you know spiked hairstyle and stuff like that. It's, uh, I'm yeah. telling you what, you know, you guys are gonna enjoy this evening sitting on our couch watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're a parent and you start to see your your child's behavior changing, what's what should you do? What what's one of the things that you can do to either monitor it without you know just looking like you're spying on them and getting them upset or do you just jump in full blown and try to and try to uh, take care of it right then and there i would not uh, pro uh, present myself as an expert as a parenting expert by any stretch i have kids i love them i think we're doing a great job with them the, there is a couple strategies and i think the best is is a, the martial arts principle of align and redirect align and redirect and that is getting more involved but being aware when you're coming to those forks in the road to help them understand the decision-making process. That's what I didn't have. It was never explained to me the consequences of going down this road. It was never explained to me that this is illegal activity. This is jail. I know you see jail on TV and it looks kind of cool. No, this is real jail. And, and if you continue to do this, that's what's gonna happen. And what happened with my instructors is that some of them went to prison some of them died in the process of smuggling drugs. This is not Mr. Miyagi. This is far more Walter White from Breaking Bad. And that's the subtitle of the book. It's uh, Who Killed Walt Bone? Breaking Bad Meets the Karate Kid. And that's exactly what happened. So describe your book a little bit more in detail. What can people expect to see out of this book? The reviews that I've been getting is that it's a great read. I'm not trying to sell the book. It's just that it's a lot of great stories. Some of the stories are exciting. They're adventurous. There literally is drugs, perverted sex, um, murder, prison, and some great classroom fight scenes. I mean, it, it, it reads like a, an action movie because it really was an action period of time. If you do, if you take The Karate Kid and mix it in with, with Breaking Bad, and in some other films, some of you may be familiar with the film Dazed and Confused. Mm -hmm. Dazed and Confused was based upon 1976, graduation night or prom night, I think. And they were all my age. They listened to Yes and Led Zeppelin and Gittin' Stone, which is exactly what we were doing in those days. So th that kind of mashup would be a good description of the book. And where can people find the book? Amazon.com. It is right now a paper book. A uh, paper book. Yeah, it's a paperback book. Uh, it's also Kindle, and soon it will be an Audible book. So it'll be. Uh, I'll read it to you. And do you have any other things in the works, maybe for like a sequel or anything? I have two sequels in mind that are uh, under development, and I continually write books and coach people on writing their own books and help people get their idea to fruition. People can find that out at uh, JohnGraden.com. That's where I'm at. And what do you want? them to take away from your book when they're done reading it or hope uh, hopefully a big away. smile i hope that i ruin their night by keeping them up all night that's <laughs> that's that's my goal start at 10 look over it's 4 a.m i'm still i'm just now finishing this guy's book that's the effect that i want i want them jo to enjoy it and the underlying message because you it's certainly not one that it, I, I beat people over the head with in the book is that that two things one be aware of what your kids are doing. And then if, if I've got teens and young people reading it, understand the power, and this is really important, and it, it took me a long time to realize this, to replace me, myself, and I with the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. That's powerful. And had I been introduced to those powerful principles at that time, think about it. I, was, I immediately immersed myself into this karate stuff. Had I been taught about the best teacher in history, bar none, I would have immersed myself in that. The combination would have been beautiful, fantastic, wonderful. I didn't get that other side until much later in life. So I would encourage somebody or anybody who's in, uh, reading the book to read it with that in mind. And most importantly, it, you did straighten yourself out and get yourself on the right and narrow, right? I did go on to have many successful businesses and win world championships. Well, fantastic. Thank you for coming on and sharing your book with us and sharing your experiences with it. And I hope people learn from this book when they read it as well. Thanks for having me.